Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. They're admitting we got a serious major physics problem. Everything they have been saying, they now realize is wrong. The, the total physics, the particle nature of things they do not understand, the deep core of the nucleus. They are not protons like this, one big ball and a couple little quarks floating around in there. They are balls of particles, and those particles are dipoles. And 1823 approximately makes up what they consider to be a proton. It is stable at 1823. This is, the this is what they're missing completely. They don't understand the nature of the particles they're dealing with. <laughs> Not at all. All right, just to fill you in on this, we've been going back and forth about the mass of an electron's neutrino. Now it says, thank you for sharing information of your paper. I put a paper, oh, I put a bunch of papers up on Academia EDU, and anyway, this is about electron neutrinos, and they have a mass. It says, I would like to share some information about neutrino masses. According to the standard model, neutrinos have no mass, and that's what they still keep saying, it's insanity. Experiments show that neutrinos actually have a very small mass, comps of observations, so forth. Let's go to the papers that we've been talking and discussing. All right, this is the paper we've been discussing. This is from somebody, Richard Mueller, down at Rutgers University Engineering. And, you know, it's a lot of, of this kind of stuff. And I mean, I did all this stuff, but it, it, some of it has, you know, when you talk about temperatures and pressures and all that stuff, yes, I agree with that. But before you can understand what's happening, you have to understand the particle nature of, of light. Which, it, light makes up every single thing there is. Anyway, we went back and forth a bunch of times, a bunch of people. And again, all of this stuff is wonderful, but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Nobody read this. <laughs> They're all just spouting. I didn't read the whole damn thing. It's ridiculous. All of that stuff means nothing until you actually see the particles in action. And that's what I did. I said that the sun ignited. At a certain point, the sun had such a big enough mass that its scrub through the universe was so hot that it, poof, it ignited. That's what, and I said, it's a scrub against a not vacuum of space. There's no vacuum in space. Space is saturated, literally saturated with particles. That means the Hubble Space Telescope doesn't work right. Obviously, we have no idea where anything is. You could have dense space here and not dense there, but it's saturated everywhere anyway. Anyway, so it goes back and forth about this. But let me show you the actual particles and then how much stuff there is in space, and then you'll see. You can make as many equations as you want. That's what I told Richard. I said, you, you cannot calculate because you have no idea what's out in space. You have no idea what you're going through. He's trying to calculate the speed of the, the particles coming through space and how far things are. You can't do it. It's impossible. There's no way that you can tell how much density is in front of you between where that light is coming from. No possible way whatsoever. Okay, this is some experiments that were done six, seven years ago. Rod Warren and I were working on this light experiment through a Venturi, which accelerated the light, as you can see down below here. This is nothing more. This is nothing more than pulsed red laser from a construction laser. Boom, 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 boom. And you see the particle accelerating and slamming through the Venturi, which forced it to accelerate, first of all. Secondly, exposed itself to being the particle that it is right here. That's that stream when it turns into this particle. And you see a black and a white attached and a black and a white attached. These blacks never change size ever. These glow and concuss as they are concussing right here now in the atmosphere right in front of it as that particle comes forward into that, those little tiny glowy particles. It has to push everybody else's fields away from its field. That's called the cashmere effect. Now, if you look here, this is CERN's and Fermi Labs' description of what happens when you have the muon turn into a sterile muon and the electron neutrino turn into an electron shower. There it is right there. The blacks never, ever, ever change. They're exactly the same size everywhere. But they can't get through the Venturi. 
the white is being squished through, bam, 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 because these have, have a weight to them. And I can show them actually pushing the white particles in a wave because it's particle wave duality. The wave is the white part. The, the black is the particle. Black has the weight. The white seems to not have any serious weight. It, it's, it burns like crazy. That's what ha burns the houses down and so forth in the atomic bomb blast. And then the next thing that comes is the black and phew, the house takes right off. And I can show that happening in the, uh, well, I will show it. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is an atomic bomb blast. And that literally is a subatomic bomb blast. This is through the Venturi. So the light's coming here and it's being compressed and phew, you see the black line here? Those are the muons. And that's literally dark energy and dark matter, and it's just mass. It doesn't grow, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't do anything. It's exactly the same size all the way. Now, it's pushing the white. You see how the white is all fluffed up? That white should be about the same size as the black until they start to concuss. And that's what's happening. It's growing. Now, what I'm going to show you now is an atomic bomb blast. The bomb goes off here. The white particles take off first because they're the ones that are pushed out. And exactly what we see. Then right behind it comes the black. The white has no mass. There's going to be a house here. The house will just burn up. It doesn't move. As the white passes by, it just vaporizes the house. Then the black hits, pew, and away goes the house. You want to see it? No problem. All right, here's what's going to happen. There's dark matter in the center of, of all particles. The dark matter goes to the center. The first thing that's going to come out is that white. And that white will come out because you crush it. Boom! That's what happens in an atomic bomb. You crush everything so tightly that the white has to escape. And when it does, the white goes out first. Then the black particles will come after it. And I'll explain it as this goes. Now this is a, a video I did Oh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And my hands are going to be going through here and there. Boom! There goes the, the bomb. Okay, you see what's happening here? All we're seeing is the is just burning up. Nothing moved. And that's exactly what happens because these are the white particles. They have no mass. They incorporate into the other particles and they make them combust. But there is no movement. Now watch. It's just vaporizing. It's just vaporizing. Even the poles and everything. Now watch. All of a sudden the blacks will come right behind it just as I showed before in my illustration. That is the atomic bomb blast. Now, it will turn around and come back because there's a void back where it, it started. Watch. Everything turns around and comes back. You see it? Zoom. It comes back. Now, that's the nature of an atomic bomb and that's the reason is because there's two particles. There's a white fluffy energetic one that has no mass and there's a black one that has all mass and no real energy. It just knocks things over. It's just all mass. And by the way, I'm not making this up. This is the Fermi point particle. This one here and this is the the one that has no mass. Here it is right here. What's the point? There's a black one. This is I took this right from Don Lincoln's paper here and he says that um, the extended particle versus point-like particles. This point-like has no mass to speak of, and I, I showed you, it just burns. That one has all the mass. And it's exactly what he says at the very end, there's no sense going through everything. But he says, in summary, the extended particles, a black one, have a fixed size. They may have a fuzzy edge, which is the color of it, green or red or blue or whatever it is. The point-like particles are mathematical extractions with zero size. And I can't dis discount that, but I find it hard to believe it has a zero size and still has a field, but it certainly has a field. It says even zero size particles have extended effect due to the effect of the field. I can't disagree with any, either of that. There's another one here he has. What is this? Oh, I, oh, plus, empty space isn't empty. That's the other thing I'm talking about. This space is filled with particles, completely saturated. They're subatomic particles winking in and out of existence. That's because every now and then they'll get hit by something. But they're filled. The whole universe is filled. They wink in and out. And then there's another one he has here. Oh, this is about the Majorna versus the Dirac. This is really the only one that exists. It's the black and the white. And sometimes you see them when they're not really 
fully energ energized one way or the other, and they're they sit in the middle. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but I've seen all kinds of particles. I mean, I've seen it virtually everything. Whoops, and. Um, I can show, well, I show you the neutrinos actually developed, the green and the blue, and, and, the, and the red. And you see this glowy edge? That's what he's talking about. Around the black is the glowy edge, which is the red, which is the color, which is the energetic value. The green has exactly identical. You see the green? <laughs> identical same particle. They come through, they start off as neutrinos. They don't have exactly the correct value to be a photon. But at, at a certain point, they turn into exact photons of light. Here, they're particles in, 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 in different energetic values. That's what they call a neutrino wobble. They, I don't know if they call that the wobble, but they, they, they get more and less energized as they go forward. Okay, as I showed you before, the, the, the photons come in, they're light, pulses of light, boom, 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 boom. This is light. It's not doesn't look like that though, does it? This is light, doesn't look like that. This is light, doesn't look like that. This is when it actually gets to be the photon, just before it concusses and creates the luminosity that we see as the glow from light reflecting. Now, this is the pulses and they get stronger and stronger and stronger. That's the neutrino value. This happens in the red, it happens in the green, it happens in the blue. They all have the same situation going on. So here, that's the red ones. This is the green ones. Well, here's what, here's the actual green photon. You see that? That's the photon. Now, one of these whites will get real glowy as it moves forward, and I can show you that happening right here. Here's the white ones getting real glowy. It's coming through here as a neutrino. There it shows as a photon. Here it's starting to get so glowed up at the bottom, the forward leading one, that it's going to flip. And then the back one will come in front and start to absorb the energy. That's the way this stuff works. And the blue does, the, all the different colors have a different energetic value, a different impact value. That's the whole key with light, is the, the more the more frequency you have, the more impact you have. It's basically the same particle, just more frequency. More frequency more means more spins. Zip! Gives you a harder bang than a zip bang. You, you know, you need that sizzle. You need that screaming particle to whack into something. And the black is the part that whacks into it. And they're finally catching on to this. All right, this should explain pretty much everything. This is just the light coming through the air pulses. It's just starting to accelerate here. Here it's really taken off. Here it explodes, and there's the actual explosion. These are coming out this way. These are the Higgs fields. We look up Higgs fields from CERN, it's the same field. Here they are here again, and here's one that came off very strange. I believe that's an anti-matter spinning backwards basically. This is the red electron um, photons building up energy as they come forward and the ones that are exactly in line with the Venturi, the ones that are off to these sides start to show up as these um, neutrinos but the one coming straight down the center is your photon. Blue is just a rocket ship, it's just so fast you can't hardly see it. The red and the green we can see very clearly. Remember I showed you those Higgs fields? This is what they see at CERN because they're smashing particles together. They're just seeing literally trash. It's debris. That's all it is. I'm not kidding. Here's what we, here's what we see. We see that white shower coming down creating the Higgs fields. I mean elegantly. As well, it's, and we can see them in green. We can see them in red. There's no mystery here. We got it pretty well nailed down. And here's the, here's the green and the red together. Coming through the same venture at the same time. You see over here? See how powerful the green is compared to the red? The red just stops here. It's just pushed out of the way. The green keeps going and reconcusses out here. Very much more powerful, quite obviously. And I can tell you one thing. I've done a lot of experiments with with photo receiving diodes and the red won't even turn it on. The red just won't turn them on at all. The green 
and blue give you a good result. You get you get energy when you put the sea moss in front of of the green or the blue. The red it just can't push any particles out of the way. It doesn't have any energy. Very weak. <laughs> All right. Why the laws of physics don't actually exist? Did scientists just discover physics is all wrong? Yes, all that stuff. It's completely wrong. And they will not step away from the standard model. You have to walk away from physics. Start over again. You're just wasting your time, wasting your money. If you're a theoretical physicist, you're out in Never Never Land right at the moment, my friends. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. I don't care how advanced you are in physics, you are uneducated in physics. Physics is totally 100% wrong right now. In the subatomic realm, 